Rotate your device. You can't turn your phone while live. Oh. Rotate your device. Hmm. Well, this is not easy to do. It's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Let me see if I can get a chair. solve all these problems very soon yeah very soon yeah but also just technical problems like this okay so it's not allowing me to put it that way so I'm gonna put it this direction and <laughs> this is a really funky way of doing Let's try this. So the new high-speed internet is also Verizon, right? Well, it's a different name, Frontier. You think they'd be using the same There. It's Verizon as this new company. So they want to make more money off the people that are already on Verizon. And nobody here has any other choice. I'm doing this while the Facebook is still live. <laughs> anyway. That seems to... Okay, well, I'm just gonna try it. And that problem, I'm gonna solve. I'm in a problem-solving mood these days. I'm organizing things. And that one is gonna get solved. I'm gonna go to town. I'm gonna buy a tripod. I already have a tripod. Yeah, that's just have to have a contraption to connect the tripod to the phone. Okay. And that's been waiting for a long time. Okay. Oma jnana timirandasya yanam jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasvai shri gurave nama Mukam karoti vacha lam pangum langayate girin. Yat kripa tamaham bandi. Shri gurun dinitaran. Vancha kalpataru yascha. Kripa sindhu evacha. Patitanam pavimebhyo. Vaishnadevino nama. Namo Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namini Gaura Trishe Nama He Krishna Karna Sindho Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Taptakanshana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavanishvari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranavami Hari Prave Brindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasvacha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Nama Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम 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 हरे हरे आई एम ऑफरिंग माय अनलिमिटेड दंडवत प्रणाम्स एंड टू माय श्रद्धा पुष्पांजलि at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Guru Dev Nityalila Pradishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Stol Tarashata, Sri Shila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. And then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs. Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Ashto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Ashto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj and I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams to the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuka Guru Varga, and my Dandavat pronounced to all the Vaishnavas and to all the Vaishnavas. We've been reading <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita chapter, Madhya Lila chapter 15, which is entitled, The Lord Accepts Prashadam at the House of Sarvabhom Bhattacharya. We're on the 154th verse of this chapter. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this chapter has been interacting with his eternal associates, his devotees, who have been staying with him in Jagannath Puri for four whole months, as they do every year. They come all the way from Bengal. From there they, they walk on foot in this big group, it takes one month. They're, I don't know, camping out along the way. There's all kinds of arrangements in those days. It's not like now, because everybody is ready to host, you know, especially groups of Vaishnavas like that. So somehow or other, Shivananda Sain is bringing them every year. They're carrying also on their heads um, wonderful preparations that they've made and prepared by hand for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like achar pickles, you know, different types of pickles that keep for a whole year, right? So they're carrying these things and there's a, there's a relief uh, painting, I guess here, sculpture, sculpture painting, a relief painting at Raghava Pandit's house in Panihati. And the, the place where Lord Nityananda used to come and stay, and he had his uh, chipped rice festival. Yeah, yogurt and chipped rice festival there, right on the bank of the Ganga. And the actual house of Raghava Pandit, not the same structure, but the place where his house was, it, it's very beautifully maintained inside, and it has this huge relief figure of um, like maybe eight feet long, maybe five feet high, and it's depicting the Gaur Bhaktas who are all going to Puri. And the way that that artist has done it, it's this classical artist, Orion style art, actually. And their, their eyes are very long, and um, they're moving along in this group, and they have their, these bags, they're called Raghavera Jali. Raghava Pandit, his sister is Damayanti. Damayanti used to prepare all these preparations for Mahaprabhu. And so the bags that they made and carried them in are called Raghavera Jali. Jali means bag. So they're carrying these bags in procession. There are probably a couple of hundred, I think, devotees coming every year from all the way from Bengal, all the way down to Puri. And these are his eternal associates from Navadweep and the neighboring villages like Srikanda and others. So, um, yeah, and, and the way that that 
it really struck me when I saw that, that art, because so much pops in their faces. There's maybe, maybe about 20 figures there, you know? And they're like in this amazing mood of they're going to meet Mahaprabhu again, and they're just absorbed. And it's very beautiful. So this chapter is actually after the Rathiatra festival. They all came before the Rathiatra festival, and then they attended uh, all the festivals between Rathiatra and uh, like Janmashtami, Radhastami. The, the whole four months, actually, the month of Kartik as well, because Kartik is the fourth month. Uh, and then they walk back. And uh, so uh, here, uh, in this section of this chapter, Mahaprabhu is glorifying, personally glorifying these various devotees and talking about their extraordinary qualities and different interactions that he's had with them. And yesterday we heard about how uh, Sri um, Hanuman personified in Gauravila. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Murari Gupta. Murari Gupta. And how Mahaprabhu was glorifying this personality, Murari Gupta, who's actually the incarnation of Hanuman in the Gauravila. And Mahaprabhu is telling the whole story about how he was trying to convert, <laughs> you know, Murari Gupta from worshipping Lord Ramachandra, Raghupati, and uh, worshipping Krishna. And Mahaprabhu is describing how he was explaining to Murari Gupta that Krishna is the source of all ras, Krishna is the Supreme Lord, he, you know, just verse after verse. And, Ra and you know, Murari Gupta is hearing this, but his heart internally is suffering because he understands that Mahaprabhu wants him to worship Radha and Krishna and give up his worship of Ram. And it describes there how Murari Gupta tells Mahaprabhu when he gives that instruction that he should now worship Radha and Krishna. And Murari Gupta tells, I am your servant. I accept your orders. So I will do what I have to do, what you have ordered to me because I'm your servant. And then it describes after that Mahaprabhu is actually telling this whole story. How uh, Murari Gupta stayed up the whole night crying. The whole night. He stayed up. He didn't get one wink of sleep. Just crying and crying out his heart and praying that he could die before the morning. Why? So that he would not have to disobey the order of Mahaprabhu because it's impossible for him to give up his, his Ram. So then he comes in the morning to Mahaprabhu and he's in this pitiful, pitiful condition after having cried all night. And then he just tells to Mahaprabhu, please, Allow me to die so that I will not have to change your, your instruction. But I cannot give up my Ram. <laughs> then Mahaprabhu embraces him. He's glorifying him and telling him, this is the real, real symptom of a bhakta that is so deep in his heart is his connection with his Ishtadeva. There is no question he can never, he, he'd rather die, you know. So those kind of sweet exchanges Mahaprabhu is having in this chapter with his various associates, one by one, glorifying them, also giving them instructions. Also, some of them are asking him questions. What should we do? Oh, Mahaprabhu, now we are leaving. We won't see you again until next year. What is your instruction to us? What should we do? How should we live? And Mahaprabhu gives three instructions. He says, Serve Krishna. Always do Krishna seva. Always do Vaishnava seva. Serve the Vaishnavas. And always chant the holy names of Krishna. Incessantly. And so then Mahaprabhu begins, and we've read those verses and purports about, you know, uh, 
what does it mean, uh, Vaishnava Seva, and to which, what is the symptoms of the Vaishnava? Because they asked Mahaprabhu, how can we recognize? You're telling us to serve a Vaishnava, so please tell us what are his symptoms that we can recognize that he's a Vaishnava, we should serve him. And then Mahaprabhu told, anyone who has chanted the holy name of Krishna one time, Ikbar, he is a Vaishnava. Now that took explaining. There were many purports, not many purports, but quite a few pages of purports that we read with various verses. Whole discussion about this. Later on in the chapter, it will tell how the same two devotees asked the same question to Mahaprabhu the second year and also the third year. And the first year, he told the symptoms of even a Kanishta Adhikari. So there's a lot of uh, discussion about how Kanishtas are also considered to be pure Vaishnavas on a certain level when they're fully serving and, tr and trying very determinedly to chant the holy name without offenses. This is the thing. So, so this is where now Mahaprabhu is telling to Marari Gupta that after Marari Gupta said to Mahaprabhu, in this way Marari Gupta appealed to me, Mahaprabhu is telling him, he appealed to me saying, you are all merciful, so kindly grant me this mercy. Let me die before you so that all my doubts will be finished. Hearing this, I became very happy. I then raised Murari Gupta and I embraced him. And I said to him, All glories to you, Murari Gupta. Sadhu, Sadhu Gupta. Tomar Sudridha Bhajan. Your method of worship is very firmly fixed. Amar Vachaneha Tomar Natalila Man. Well, so much so that even upon my request, your mind did not turn. Then he says, the servitor must have love and affection for the lotus feet of the Lord exactly like this. Even if the Lord wants separation, a devotee cannot abandon the shelter of his lotus feet. So now there's a purport here. Can you turn it up just slightly? We'll make sure they're hearing it online. <clears throat> it's probably the same one that you used at Arctic this afternoon. Hari Bo, 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 Bo. Hari Krishna, Hari Bo. Yeah, I think it's okay now. So now in the purport, Shri Prabhupada is saying, the word Prabhu, or Master, indicates that the Lord is to be continuously served by his devotee. The original Prabhu is the Lord, Sri Krishna. Nonetheless, there are many devotees attached to Lord Ramachandra. And Murari Gupta is a vivid example of such unalloyed devotion. He never agreed to give up Lord Ramachandra's worship, not even upon Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's request. Such is the chastity of devotional service, as stated in the Antilila of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chapter 4. Se bhakta danya yena chade prabhu charan. Se prabhu danya yena chade nija jan. Dur daive sevak jadi jai anyastani. Se takur danya tari chule dhari ani. In a firm relationship with the Lord, the devotee does not give up the Lord's service under any circumstance. And as far as the Lord himself is concerned, if the devotee chooses to leave, the Lord brings him back again, dragging him by the hair. This is the pure love of the master and the servant. So then Mahaprabhu says, 
Tomorrow you will go. E mata tomar nishta, jani vadi tadi. Just to test your nishta, just to test your firm faith in your Lord, I requested you again and again to change your worship from Lord Ramachandra to Krishna. And in this way, I congratulated Marana Gupta, saying, Indeed, you are the incarnation of Hanuman, and consequently, you are the eternal servant of Lord Ramachandra. Why should you give up the worship of Lord Ramachandra and his lotus feet? Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, I accept this Marari Gupta as my life and soul. When I hear of his, of his humility, it perturbs my very life. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Vasudev Datta. And he began to speak of his glories as if he had a thousand mouths. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glorified him, Vasudev Dutta immediately became very much embarrassed and shy. And he then submitted himself, touching the Lord's lotus feet. Vasudev Dutta told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, My dear Lord, you incarnate just to deliver all conditioned souls. I now have one petition which I wish that you would accept. My Lord, you are certainly able to do whatever you like, and you are indeed merciful. If you so desire, you can very easily do whatever you want. But my Lord, my heart breaks to see the sufferings of all the conditioned souls. And therefore, I request you to transfer the karma of their sinful lives upon my head. My dear Lord, let me suffer perpetually in a hellish condition accepting all the sinful reactions of all living entities, please finish their diseased material life. Now here's a very important purport by Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives the following commentary on this verse. In the Western countries, Christians believe that Lord Jesus Christ, their spiritual master, appeared in order to eradicate all the sins of his disciples. And to this end, Lord Jesus Christ appeared and he disappeared. Here, however, we find Sri Vasudev Datta Thakur and Sri Haridas Thakur to be many millions of times more advanced than even Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ relieved only his followers from all sinful reactions. Is that not true? Yes. That's the whole philosophy of Christianity. That Jesus died for your sins. If you accept him, then you can get this benefit. But if you don't accept him, you don't. Although he did make a provision for those who were personally executing him to be forgiven to the Roman soldiers. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, he did. So there's a little uh, bit of that. Yes. But in general, yeah. the whole philosophy is believe in Jesus and you're saved. I grew up with that, so I know it exactly. very, very well. <laughs> So, but the point that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is making, it's not uh, in any way belittling Jesus Christ, but he's pointing out how extreme. He's, Vasudev Datta is standing directly in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he realizes that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord, and that he can do anything. And he literally prays to him, Please, I cannot tolerate to see the jiva's suffering. 
Please take all of their sinful rea and place on my head. I will suffer perpetually. So, Vasudev, Jesus Christ relieved only his followers <coughs> from all sinful reactions, but Vasudev Datta is here prepared to accept the sins of everyone in the universe. So the comparative position of Vasudev Datta is millions of times better than that of Lord Jesus Christ. A Vaishnava is so liberal that he is prepared to risk everything to rescue the conditioned souls from material existence. Srila Vasudev Datta Thakur is universal love itself. Did you hear that? This personality, Vasudev Datta Thakur, is universal love itself. For he was willing to sacrifice everything and to fully engage in the service of the Supreme Lord. Srila Vasudev Datta knew very well that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the original personality of Godhead. Transcendence itself and above the material conception of illusion and maya, he understood who, person, who this personality is. Pers original personality of Godhead, transcendence itself above the material conception of illusion and maya. Lord Jesus Christ certainly finished the sinful reactions of his followers by his mercy, but that does not mean he completely delivered them from the pangs of material existence. A person may be relieved from sins once, but it is a practice among Christians to confess sins and yet commit them again. By getting freed from sins and again engaging in them, one cannot attain freedom from the pangs of material existence. A diseased person may go to a physician for relief, but after he leaves the hospital, he may again be infected due to his unclean habits. And thus, material existence continues. Srila Vasudev Datta, he wanted to completely relieve the conditioned souls from material existence so that they would no longer have an opportunity to commit sinful acts. This is the significant difference between Srila Vasudev Dutta and Lord Jesus Christ. It is a great offense to receive pardon for sins and then commit the same sins again. This is a great offense. Such an offense is more dangerous than the sinful activity itself. Vasudev Dutta was so liberal that he requested Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to transfer all offensive activity upon him so the conditioned souls would be purified and go back home, back to Godhead. This prayer was certainly without duplicity. He's telling this with no duplicity to Mahaprabhu. Vasudev Dutta's example is unique not only within this world, but within the universe. It is beyond the conception of fruitive actors or the speculation of mundane philosophers. Due to being illusioned by the external energy and due to a poor fund of knowledge, people tend to envy one another. Yes? Yes? There's envy in this material world, right? The conditioned souls envy each other. Why? Due to being illusioned by the external energy and due to a poor fund of knowledge. People tend to envy one another. Because of this, they are entangled in fruitive activity and they try to escape this fruitive activity by mental speculation. Karma Gyan. Consequently, neither karmis nor jnanis are purified. In the words of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, they are 
Ku karmis and ku gyanis. Ku means bad. They are bad fruitive actors and they are bad speculators. The my bodies and karmis should therefore turn their attention to the magnanimous Vasudev Datta who wanted to suffer for others in a hellish condition. No one should consider Vasudev Datta a mundane philanthropist or, or a welfare worker. Nor was he interested in merging into the Brahman effulgence or in gaining material honor or reputation. He was far, far above philanthropists, philosophers, and fruitive actors. He was the most exalted personality to ever show mercy to the conditioned souls. This is not an exaggeration of his transcendental qualities. It is perfectly true. Actually, there cannot be any comparison to Vasudev Datta. As the perfect Vaishnava, he was Paradukha Dukhi. He was very much aggrieved to see others suffer. The entire world is purified simply by the appearance of such a great devotee. Indeed, by his transcendental presence, the whole world is glorified and all conditioned souls are also glorified. As Narottam Das Thakur confirms, Vasudev Datta is the ideal devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Here's the line. Gorangera Sangi Gane Nitya Siddha Kori Mani Sejai Rajendra Sutta Pash. Recognize this line? This is from the song called Gorangera Duti Pada Jardana Sampada. So, this is in this, well, this is one of the verses. And it's telling here that Gorangera Sangi Gane. This means the personalities who are the associates of Goranga. Nitya Siddhi, Nitya Siddha Kodimani. Anyone who considers those personalities to be eternally perfected. Say Jai, Rajendra Sutta Pash. Very quickly, that person will achieve the direct association of the son of Maharaj Nanda, Krishna. So one who executes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission must be considered eternally liberated. Baba's referring to himself and his Guru Maharaj and all of our acharyas. One who executes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission must be considered eternally liberated. He is a transcendental person and does not belong to this material world. Such a devotee, engaging in the deliverance of the total population, is as magnanimous as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Then he quotes the verse written by Rupa Goswami. Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauda Namaha so such a personality factually represents Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because his heart is always filled with compassion for all conditioned souls. It's the end of this purport. Any comments, questions? Yes? So who is um, Vasudev Dattatakura and other um, oh, you mean in Krishna Leela and like that? Yeah. Um, I'd have to look that up. It hasn't been told in these reports here, but he's he, obviously he's the eternal associate from Goloka Vrindavan, from Mahaprabhu's Leela, from Radha Krishna's Leela that has descended because when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came down from the eternal spiritual world and appeared here, 
he brought his associates with him. Some of them appeared before him, some of them during, and even some of them after his appearance. Vasudev Dutta is in this category. Probably, you know, there's a book that tells their identities. It's called Gaur Ganandesha Deepika. Kadi Karnapur, one of Mahaprabhu's associates, the son of Shiva the same, he wrote that book. So he reveals many. And if I also looked in, um, if, if actually if I looked on my computer at uh, Bhakti Balabhatir Maharaj's book, he reveals a lot of those associates. If that information is available, he usually quotes it in the beginning. So if I looked up the name Vasudev Dutta, then it may have there, and then I can answer. I can, I can look after, after the class and see. Any other? Yeah. So it seems like he's even more merciful than Mahaprabhu, but he could not be merciful without Mahaprabhu. So it's an yes. interesting. Yes. Well, if we're going to now hear how Mahaprabhu responds. Mm. Yes. So, but, and it has said here that such a personality as Vasudev Dutta, they are as merciful as Mahaprabhu. Not more, <laughs> as merciful. So let's see how Mahaprabhu answers this. Etashuni Mahaprabhu Chitta Dravida. Whoa. Mahaprabhu, when he heard this, his heart became softened, like melting heart. Ashru Kampa Swarabhangye Kohite Lagila. I think. The phone might have gone off. It's making. No, it's on. No? Okay. Okay. So, where's that sound coming from? Oh, oh, it must be coming from your phone. Here. Eta Shuni Mahaprabhu Chitra Dravila. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvi Kagiridhani Radha Govinda Ji Ki Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shyam Ki Jai Jai Ki So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard Vasudeva Dutta's statement, his heart became very soft. Tears flowed from Mahaprabhu's eyes, and he began to tremble, and in a faltering voice, he spoke as follows. Tomar vichitra nahi tumi sakshat pralad. Accepting Vasudev Dutta as a great devotee, the Lord said, such a statement is not at all astonishing because you are the incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. I was thinking that. <laughs> Tomar Upare Krishner Sampurana Prasad, he appear, it appears that Lord Krishna has bestowed complete mercy upon you. There is no doubt about it. He said, Mahaprabhu said, whatever a pure devotee wants from his master, Lord Krishna doubtlessly grants, because he has no duty other than to fulfill the desire of his devotee. Then Mahaprabhu said, if you desire the deliverance of all living entities within the universe, then all of them can be delivered even without your undergoing the tribulations of sinful activity. Krishna is not incapable, for he has all potencies. Why would he induce you to suffer the sinful reactions of other living entities? Tumijar hittavancha se hoilo vaishna. Whosoever welfare that you desire immediately becomes a Vaishnava. And Krishna delivers all Vaishnavas
from the reactions of their past sinful activities. Are you getting this sequence? Let's, here's, now, here's a purport explaining this now. So first of all, Mahaprabhu, his heart melted and he was weeping and he was trembling. And to, to hear such request. So then he explained, this is not surprising because you are directly Prahlad. You know how Prahlad prayed to Lord and Shri, they were saying the same prayer. And then Mahaprabhu is explaining that certainly because you are such a Vaishnava, Krishna will, can arrange that. He can do anything. He's not incapable. Uh -huh. And for sure, uh, Krishna can do that without you having to suffer. And not only that, but whoever you desire, Krishna can immediately deliver him and he becomes a Vaishnava. It says here, Whoever's, whosoever welfare you desire immediately becomes a Vaishnava. And Krishna delivers all Vaishnavas from the reactions of their past sinful activities. So now we'll hear the explanation of this. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here informed Vasudev Datta that since Krishna is all-powerful, he can immediately deliver all conditioned souls from material existence. So in essence, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, quote, you desire the liberation of all kinds of living entities without discrimination. You are very anxious for their good fortune. And I say that simply by your prayer, all living entities within the universe can be liberated. You do not even have to take up the burden of their sinful activities. Hmm? Thus, there is no need for you to suffer for their sinful lives. Whoever receives your compassion becomes a Vaishnav immediately. And Krishna delivers all Vaishnavas from the reactions to their past sinful activities. Krishna also promises this. Where? In the Bhagavad Gita. You know that? That Krishna promises. He makes this very promise. It's at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter. Sarvadharman prityajya mame kam sharanam braja aham tvam sarvapape vyo moksha shyami ma shuchaha. Abandon all varieties of religion. Sarvadharman prityajya mame kam sharanam braja. Just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from what? All sinful reactions. Sarva papebhyo. Aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha ishyami. I will deliver you. So, ma do not fear. Do not fear, Arjuna. There's not going to be any sinful reactions. You just surrender to me and you do what I am telling you to do. Fight on this battlefield. So as soon as one surrenders to Krishna, as soon as one surrenders to Krishna, he becomes a Vaishnava. Do you see? If someone hasn't at least begun the process of surrender, he's not really yet in the category of a Vaishnava. But as soon as one fully surrenders to Krishna, then he becomes a Vaishnava. So in this verse from the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna promises to relieve his devotee from all the reactions to sinful life. It is a fact that a fully surrendered Vaishnava is completely out of the range of material infection. This is to say that he does not suffer the results of his previous pious or impious actions. Unless one is freed from sinful life, one cannot become a Vaishnava. Unless one is freed from sinful life, 
one cannot become a Vaishnava. In other words, if one is a Vaishnava, his sinful life is certainly ended. So according to the Padma Purana, here's a quote. Paprarabda falam papam kutam bijam falon mukam krame naiva pralieta vishnu bhakti ratatmana. It is describing the three different stages of sinful reactions. There are three different stages of dormant reactions to sinful activities to be observed in a sinful reactions may be just waiting to take effect. They're waiting. They haven't yet taken effect, but they're waiting. That's called falon muka. Falon muka. Then reactions may be still further dormant. That's called kuta. Or the reactions may be in a seed-like state, which is falon muka. That which is already fructified and... No. Falon mukam means the sinful reactions that may be just waiting to take effect. They haven't yet. The actual reaction hasn't yet, but they're just waiting to take effect. Then the kuta are the reactions that may be still even further dormant. They're on down the line, right? And then there's the reactions that may be just in a seed-like state. That's called bija. So in any case, in any case of these three, all types of sinful reactions are vanquished, one after another, if a person engages in the devotional service of Lord Vishnu. Vishnu Bhakti Ratatmanam. Then... Mahaprabhu quotes the Brahma Samhita, where it's telling, Lord Brahma is telling about, it's a very interesting verse from Brahma Samhita. He's telling how all the living entities in the universe, from Lord Brahma all the way down to the insects, huh, they're all bound by their karma. So here's the verse. <clears throat> Yastvindra gopamata vindra mahosva karma Bandhanu rupa palabhajanam atanoti Karmani nirdahati Kintu chabakti bhajam Govindamari purusham Tamaham bhajami Prabhupada would quote the third line of this verse a lot in his purports. Karmani nirdahati Kintu chabakti bhajam So here's the translation. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the original personality of Godhead, Govinda, who regulates the sufferings and the enjoyments due to fruitive activity. He does this for everyone, from the heavenly king Indra and down to the smallest insect called Indra Gopa. That very personality of Godhead destroys the karmic reactions of one engaged in devotional service. Karmani nirdahati kintu cha bhakti bhajam. Bhakti bhajam means doing bhakti, right? And karmani nirdahati means burns up, burns up all these karmas. So Mahaprabhu is explaining this. He's telling to Vasudev Dutta, Tomar Icha Matre Habe Brahmanda Mochan. He says, Because of your honest desire, all living entities within the universe will be delivered. For Krishna does not have to do anything to deliver all the living entities of the universe. Just as there are millions of fruits on the Udumbara tree. So millions of universes float on the waters of the river Viraja. Here's the purport. Viraja is a river that divides the material world from the spiritual world. On one side of the river Viraja is the effulgence of Brahmaloka and innumerable Vaikuntha planets. And on the other side 
is this material world. So it is to be understood that this side of the Virja river, river is filled with material planets floating in the causal ocean. The name Viraja indicates a marginal position between the spiritual and material worlds. But the Viraja river is not under the control of the material energy. Consequently, it is devoid of the three gunas. Yes, so Mahaprabhu is saying, just as there are millions of fruits on the Udumbara tree, there are millions of universes float on the waters of the river Viraja. Now, the Udumbara tree is filled with millions of fruits, and if one fruit falls down from that tree, it has millions of fruits, and if one fruit falls down and it is destroyed, the tree does not even consider the loss. In the same way, if one universe is vacated due to the living entities having been liberated, that is a very little thing for Krishna. He does not take it very seriously. <laughs> the entire spiritual world constitutes the unlimited opulences of Krishna, and there are innumerable Vaikuntha planets there. The causal ocean is considered the surrounding waters of Vaikuntha Loka. So Maya and her unlimited material universes are situated in that causal ocean. So indeed, Maya appears to be floating like a pot filled with mustard seeds. If of the millions of mustard seeds floating in that pot, if one seed is lost, the loss is not at all significant. Similarly, if one universe is lost, it is not significant to Lord Krishna. Mm -hmm. To say nothing of one universal mustard seed, if all the universes and the material energy maya are destroyed, Krishna does not even consider the loss. Koti kama denu patir chagi jaiche mari. If a person possessing <coughs> millions of wish fulfilling cows, hmm? kama denu, he has millions of wish fulfilling cows, if he loses one she goat, he does not consider the loss. So Krishna owns all six opulences in full. And if the entire material energy is destroyed, what does he lose? So Bhaktivinoda Thakur is clarifying these verses now. We will hear his explanation. He states that the meaning of these stanzas is very simple, but that the purport is a little difficult to understand. Generally, the conditioned souls forget Krishna when they are enticed by the material external energy. Consequently, they are called Krishna Bahir Mukha. They are bereft of their relationship with Krishna. And when such a living entity comes under the jurisdiction of the material energy, he is sent into one of the innumerable material universes created by the material energy, to give a chance to the conditioned souls to fulfill their desires in the material world. Being very eager to enjoy the fruits of their activities, the conditioned souls become involved in the actions and the reactions of material life. And consequently, they enjoy and they suffer the results of karma. However, if a conditioned soul becomes Krishna conscious, the karma of his pious and his impious activities is completely destroyed simply by becoming a devotee. One is freed of all the reactions of karma. Similarly, simply by the desire of a devotee, a conditioned soul can attain liberation and transcend the results of karma. Since everyone can be liberated in this way, one may conclude that it is according to the sweet will of the devotee whether the material world exists 
or does not exist. Ultimately, however, it is not the sweet will of the devotee, but it is the will of the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, who, if he so desires, can completely annihilate the material creation. There is no loss on his part. The owner of millions of cows does not consider the loss of one she-goat. Similarly, Lord Krishna is the proprietor of both the material and spiritual universes. <clears throat> the material world constitutes only one-fourth of his creative energy. If, according to the desire of the devotee, the Lord completely destroys the creation, he is so opulent that he will not mind the loss. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued by quoting a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 87th chapter. This is the prayers of the Shrutigan, the personified Vedas who are glorifying the Lord. And they're telling, Jaya Jaya Jahyaham, Ajita Dosha, Dribita Gunam, Twam Asiyad Atmana, Samavarudha Samasta Bhaga. Bhaga Jagad O Kasam Akila Shak Dyaba of Aboda Kate Vachit Ajayat Mana Cha Charato Nicharen Nigama. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted this verse, he continued. O my Lord, O unconquerable one, O master of all potencies, please exhibit your internal potency to conquer the nations of all moving and inert living entities. Due to nations, they accept all kinds of faulty things, thus provoking a fearful situation. O oh Lord, please show your glories. You can do this very easily, for your internal potency is beyond the external potency, and you are the reservoir of all opulence. You are also the demonstrator of the material potency. You are also engaged in your pastimes in the spiritual world, where you exhibit your reserved internal potency. And sometimes you exhibit the external potency by glancing over it. Thus, you manifest your pastimes. The Vedas confirm your two potencies and accept both types of pastimes due to them. So, in these prayers by the Vedas personified, quoted by Mahaprabhu, the Almighty Personality of God has three potencies internal, external, and marginal. The conditioned souls who are condemned. Due to their forgetfulness of the Lord, they are put under the control of the external potency when she creates the material world. Are you ready, or what? Uh, oh, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. You still have to take the plate off and everything, right? Well, the plate's off, but I put oh. the plate off. I mean, the arch, the architecture. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we're enjoying. Yes. So the three modes of material nature keep the living entity in a constant state of fear. There's a verse. Bayam dutiya benivesha tasyat. That verse. This is the verse that Gurudev quoted, and there's a book made from that lecture in Australia. It's called Gurudev Atatma. At the end of this verse, is the words Guru Devatatma. So here, in the beginning of this verse, it's telling Bayam. Bayam means fear, right? Like Srila Prabhupada's name is Abhaya. <laughs> Abhaya Charan. So Bhaya means fear. So the three material modes of nature keep the living entity in a constant state of fear. Bayam Dutiya Beniveshata. So the conditioned soul is always fearful due to being controlled by the external potency. Therefore, the conditioned soul should always pray to the Almighty Lord to conquer the external potency, Maya, so that 
she will no longer manifest her powers, which bind all living entities moving and inert. By praying in this way, one will become eligible to remain constantly in the association of the Lord, thus fulfilling the mission of going back home, back to Godhead. So, in conclusion here, now in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described the good qualities of his devotees one after another. And then he embraced them and he bade them farewell. So due to the impending separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the devotees began to cry. The Lord was also morose due to the separation from the devotees. And Gadadhar Pandit, he remained with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was given a place to live at Yameshwara. Yameshwara is on the southwest side of the Jagannath Temple. Gadadhar Pandit resided there and there was a small garden and a sandy beach known as Yameshwara Tota, the place that you like, that we all like. Have you been to Puri? Oh. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he says it in his Jai Dwani. Toto Gopinath ki Jai. Gadadhar Pandit ki Jai. Mahaprabhu would go there every day. I love that place. So now, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained at Jagannath Puri, Nila Chala, with Paramananda Puri, Jagannananda Pandit, Suruk Damodar, Damodar Pandit, Govinda, and Kashishwar. It was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's daily practice to see Lord Jagannath in the morning. And one day, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya came before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with folded hands, and he submitted a request. Since all the Vaishnavas had now returned to Bengal, there was a good chance that the Lord would accept an invitation. So Sarvam Bhattacharya said, please accept my invitation for lunch for one month. The Lord replied, that is not possible because it is against the religious principles of a sannyasi. <laughs> and Sarvabhama then said, please accept the invitation for 20 days. The Mahaprabhu replied, it is not a regulated principle of the renounced order. When Sarvabhama requested Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to accept lunch for 15 days, then the Lord said, I shall accept lunch at your place for one day only. <laughs> then Sarvabhama then caught hold of the Lord's feet, lotus feet, and submitted, submissively begged, please accept lunch for at least 10 days. <laughs> and in this way, by and by, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reduced the duration to five days. So thus for five days he regularly accepted Bhattacharya's invitation to lunch. And after this, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, My Lord, there are ten sannyasis with you. Huh? Then Sarvabhama Bhattacharya submitted that Paramananda Puri Goswami would accept a five-day invitation at his place. This had already been settled before the Lord. Then Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, Damodar Swarup is my intimate friend. Who's that? Swarup Damodar, the secretary of Mahaprabhu. He's my intimate friend, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said. He will come sometimes with you and sometimes alone. Then the other eight sannyasis will accept invitations for two days each. And in this way, there will be engagements for each and every day during the entire month. So, purport. During the entire month, consisting of 30 days, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would visit Sarvabhama Bhattacharya for five days. Paramananda Puri Goswami would visit for five days. <coughs> Sup Damodar for four days. And the other eight sannyasis for two days each. So that's 16. In this way, the 30 days of the month would be filled. So he said, if all the sannyasis come together, mm -hmm. it would not be possible for me to pay them proper respects. Therefore, I would be an offender. 
Sometimes you will come alone to my place, and sometimes you will be accompanied by Swarup Damada. Having this arrangement confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Bhattacharya became very glad and immediately invited the Lord to his house on that very day. And Sarvabhom Bhattacharya's wife was known as Shatir Mata, the mother of Shati. She was a great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and she was affectionate like a mother. And after returning to his home, Sarvabhom Bhattacharya gave orders to his wife and his wife Shati Aramata began cooking with great pleasure. At Sarvabhom Bhattacharya's house, there was always a full stock of food. Whatever spinach, vegetables, fruits, and so on were required, he collected and he brought that back home. Sarvabhom Bhattacharya personally began to help Shati Aramata cook. She was very experienced and she knew how to cook nicely. And on the southern side of the kitchen were two rooms for offering food. And in one of them, the food was offered to Shalagram Narayan, in the purport prophet says, among the followers of the Vedic way, the Shalagram Shila, the Vigraha of Narayan, is worshipped in the form of a stone ball. In India, every Brahmin still worships the Shalagram Shila in his home. The Vaishyas and Kshatriyas may also engage in this worship, but it is compulsory in the house of the Brahmin. So then the other room of the two rooms was for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lunch. The Lord's lunch room was very secluded and it was newly constructed by the Bhattacharya. The room was so constructed that there was only one door opening on the outside which served as an entrance for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There was another door attached to the kitchen and it was through this door that the food was brought. First, three man, man, manas of cooked rice, almost six pounds, was poured onto a big banana leaf. So purport, this is the beginning of the description of the food prepared by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and this description is given by Kaviraj Goswami, who, it is assumed, was an expert cook who knew both how to prepare and how to serve food. So that description is waiting for us in tomorrow's class. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Go. Shri Chaitanya Charitam Ritam Ki Jai Sarvabhom Bhattacharya Ki Jai Vasudev Dutta Thakur Ki Jai Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Nitya Parikar Ki Jai Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Kshetra Dharma Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanandi Vancha Kalpatiru Vishcha, Kripa Sindhu Devacha, Vaditanam Pamanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namo Namo.